Hey class, how you guys doing? Okay, I want to go through module one and just kind of go through the lay of the land, so to speak, and also the assignments and the discussion board for attendance. So um, module one introduction, we're talking, what are we talking about in module one? We're talking about symbols and icons and how they relate to logos. So throughout the, the, the course, you're going to see reference to uh, symbols and icons and what are symbols what are icons we'll get into that in one second but I think the big picture here is how do they relate to logo development and and the formula here is that as visual communicators we need to establish a way to communicate using a visual shorthand so in other words we need to be able to develop visual attributes that refer to a more complex idea. So if you're going to um, try to represent an idea pictorially, quite often that can be very, very difficult. So what we do, it, without drawing out a whole scene, do you see what I'm saying? So what we do is we condense these pictorial representations into simple graphics that represent ideas. Those ideas are called those representations are called symbols. So right over here, we can see some examples of symbols. Now, if you notice, symbols can be uh, either pictorial or they can be abstract. Most often, um, uh, symbols are, are abstract representations of the idea they represent. For example, this peace sign here doesn't mean anything without the associated meaning tied to it. So unless you know what this means, it doesn't mean anything. Do you see what I'm saying? And that is one of the major considerations of a symbol, is that it has to have assigned meaning. Okay, so we move to symbols. Why do we use symbols, first of all? What are symbols and why do we use them? So uh, symbols are arb arbitrarily assigned to an object, concept, or socially accepted. The symbol must be learned. Okay, that's what I'm saying. The symbol must be learned. So we need to learn what this peace sign means in order for it to have meaning. So just drawing the symbol itself does not assign meaning to the symbol. Okay, that's a key principle in symbols, and it's one of the key differences in uh, between symbols and icons. Okay, so why do we use symbols? This is a great little video here, and it really describes the history, and basically in a nutshell, the history of symbology and using symbols is derived, many believe, from the um, uh, ancient civilizations, specifically warning other individuals within those same ancient uh, cultures, warning them how to and what to be aware of and what to beware of in their uh, um, everyday um, um, existence. For example, okay, if you are a hunter in a Paleolithic or an, an ancient civilization, and hunters and gatherers or farmers, okay, let's say in hunters and gatherers, you are a hunter and you're on a hunt, okay, and you and, and there's something that is presents relative danger, like perhaps animals, perhaps a cliff, perhaps falling rocks. So what happens is you are trying, these ancient civilizations are trying to communicate with one another, allowing each other to understand that there could be a specific danger associated with an event that might be occurring, right? So, for example, if there's a specific hunting ground that has falling rocks, how do you let other hunters know that that danger is inherent? Remember, there's no language yet. Okay, so you can't just write a note on a cave wall. You have to let them know pictorially. And that is the origin of symbols, allowing communication pictorially as opposed to verbally. Very, very important consideration. This video explains things beautifully. Okay, we also have how are symbols related to logos and how to design symbols. So take a look at those, and that is your, your uh, uh, kind of introduction to symbols. Then from there, we move on to what are icons. Now, icons are a little bit different than symbols in that um, it's still a shorthand of a way to communicate visual uh, a visual message without having to draw it out or write it out. So one little icon represents an idea, right? 
But the, the difference and the main difference between icons, and icons are everywhere, as you know, they're on our phones, they're on our computers, they're, they're, they're on a wayfinding at the airport. We find icons depicting bathrooms, restrooms, restaurants, customs area, uh, baggage claim, parking, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. So they're used quite extensively, specifically in uh, situations that need to transcend uh, uh, cultural barriers as well as uh, language barriers. Okay, so think of an international airport, for example. Uh, you're not going to write the word men's room on a men's room um, a, a door because it's a multi-cultural uh, um, audience that also speaks several different languages. So we have to let them know differently. I want to give you a quick story regarding um, icons. A few years ago, I was in Palo Alto in California. I was meeting with a client and we were sitting in this really super fancy French restaurant. The client had taken me to dinner to talk about some design aspects for a project I was working. Took me to this really super fancy French restaurant, right? And I was a little, I'll be honest with you, I was a little out of my element because it was really super pretentious. I mean, it was, the waiters were wearing tuxedos. It was white tablecloth, the whole nine yards, right? So needless to say, I was a little nervous to start with. So at one point, I, you know, we're carrying on with this, with this uh, design business meeting, and I'm just, uh, pr uh, presenting my design ideas for the client. And everything went great, right? And, and the client... I, you know, hired me to do the, the project. And to, the story is related directly to icons because at one point during the dinner, I needed to excuse myself to use the restroom. Restrooms were on the second floor of the restaurant. So I walked up there and there's two restrooms, okay? And instead of having icons that were very easy to understand, very easy to depict. And you can imagine in a situation quite often you need to decide which room you're going into quickly as it is, of course, a restroom, right? So I get there and I'm looking at these two rooms and I could not figure out. The icons were terrible. They were not depicting man or woman. They were something trying to be really cute and, and the, the, the language was French, which I don't speak. And the, the, it, it wasn't, um, you know, the, the simple language, mademoiselle or monsieur, it was something completely different. It was what I thought to be a big, big design mistake because I am one customer that couldn't decipher, standing in front of two rooms, I couldn't decipher which one was the men's room. I had to ask a person on the wait staff. The reason I'm using this story as an example is because it's important when you're designing icons to make them there's, they need to be a pictorial representation. And that is one of the big differences between symbols and icons. Symbols can be abstract. Icons need to tell you exactly what is going on. Icons should also have some sort of frame around them to contain the meaning within a shape. Okay, I'll talk about that more in a second. So that's the main difference between icons and, and symbols. And, and you need to really to do some research and understand how and why these are associated with logo uh, development. Okay, moving on. Um, here, here you have 10 tips for designing icons. And then you also have seven principles of effective icon design. Okay, now here's a little bit about the difference between symbols and icons and our attendance question this week guys if you if you click that and don't forget to to participate in the attendance discussion but at any rate the attendance discussion here if we jump over right here i'm going to open that in a new window so i don't lose my place however that attendance discussion is pretty easy in your own words now in your own words describe the differences between an icon and a symbol okay please don't use the words please don't don't you do this in your own words, okay? Uh, learning objectives to, uh, for this week are understanding the difference between symbols and icons and understanding how the this, this study of symbols and icons can benefit effective logo design. Again, it's a shorthand language that is, is going to help us to assist us. Learning symbols, learning icons is going to assist us in a, a language that we can develop to, uh, to develop, to uh, uh, design logos 
because again, logo design is a, a basic shorthand language that we use to represent a specific idea associated with a specific organization. Logo, right? Okay, let's move forward. Here we have our agenda, review module lecture and associated links and resources and go through all of these links. There's not too much here, guys. There's really not. But go through them. I'd like you to know these like the back of your hand by the end of the week. Assignment uh, 1, 333 Concept Development. We'll talk about that in a second. Participate in the attendance discussion. Scamper Idea Generation. This is a great video. Scamper is a fantastic technique. I highly recommend that you go through this and, and really learn it well. Complete the technology survey. And that is located in the Right over here, that technology survey is located. It's located in two places. It's in the assignments. And it's also, believe it or not, it's located in the quizzes. So don't forget to include that. Now, our um, assignment this week is the concept development stage of assignment one. Here's the, the rubric right here. Let's pop that guy open. And we'll we'll go ahead and see what's, what, what's going on here. So for this assignment, you're going to choose an emotion, an animal, and an object. Choose three shapes, like, but not limited to a circle, a triangle, and a square. You can use any shapes you want. Okay, now these are, uh, this is icon development, right? So so we're go going to develop icons. Each icon will represent a different shape and color. So what we're going to do is we're going to design icons. All right, all right, so when it says shape, it says a square, a circle, and a a, a triangle, you're not limited to those. You can use any shapes you want. So for example, if you want to use a hanger as your object, it's a good idea to use this shape of a hanger. Conversely, if, if you want to depict a helicopter in your icon, of course, it's a shape of a helicopter. So I don't want you to think you have to use a square, a circle, or a rectangle, right? Or a, uh, or a square, a circle, or a triangle. Okay, as you can see, this no smoking or this this kind of smoking, if this were a smoking area, it's a, it's just a simple rectangle with lines, with a long rectangle uh, uh, oriented in, on the horizontal, then three small rectangles oriented on the vertical, and then three wavy lines. So those are a combination of shapes um, uh, used to uh, construct this icon right here. Okay, so what are we doing in the first part of this? As you can see, concept development is at the end of uh, due at the end of week one. So what you're going to do in concept development for this is you are going to move this over because the camera's in the way a little bit here. I don't want this to interfere. So let's just move that guy over right there. All right, concept development due at the end of week one, right? So please submit a written rationale, including your choice of an emotion, an animal, and an object. So there's three different things, icons you're going to design. You're going to decide the shape, describe the shape you're going to use. Okay, to symbolize them and give your reasoning behind your choice of shape. Indicate the color you will uh, assign to each item. Include your color swatches and describe how the color is relevant to the subject. Submit your written rationale and sketches of the proposed icon. So let me give you a quick example here. Okay, so I would like to provide you with a couple of examples. Now, keep in mind, I am in Adobe Illustrator, right? But you will be submitting your um, concept development with sketches. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to sketch out your idea for um, your symbols for an emotion, um, a, a, an object, and an animal. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of these, but keep in mind I am an Adobe Illustrator, so you will be sketching these, all right, and you'll be submitting them with your written rationale as well as your color choices. So let's jump over to Illustrator. Now my first example I want to do, the emotion I'm going to pick is sadness. Okay, so let's just come over here, and in my sketch, I'm going to do this. Okay, so in my sketch, remember I said the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of establish a frame for our sketch. Okay, so there's the, the frame that will hold the icon, and we can see that's very typical in icons where they have some sort of frame, whether it's circular, rectangular, square, or, um, uh, or other. So like in the international no symbol right there. So let's go ahead and, okay, now my first emotion that I'm, I'm going to do an emotion, and the emotion is, is sad, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about how can I represent sad? So we think of sad, we usually think of a frown, somebody's face with a sad frown on their face. So instead of drawing a face with a frown, I want to do this kind of, remember we talked about this shorthand kind of 
um, representation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the sad, the sad mouth, the kind of frowny face. Okay. And I know that's not a great, and I'm not trying for it to be, but I just want to get you an idea of what's happening here. Okay. So we're, this is going to, we're going to illustrate sad here. Okay, so it's sad. All right, there's our icon for sad. Now let's talk about color. Well, let's think about this. So color, we usually think of, of sad, we think of blues. Okay, I've got the blues, which means I'm, it's typically sad. So I think that's a really good example of a color to use for this. So let's go ahead and assign blue to that. Okay, now the next thing I would do is I want to do a, an animal. Okay, so let's follow, let's just follow this, this kind of simple approach. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a bowl for my animal. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is come over here. Let's come over here and let's go ahead and sketch out our frame, right? All right, now with my bowl, I'm going to kind of follow along this same lead. I'm going to take that and I just want to show you how you can use different shapes and really use your imagination as long as those shapes are indicative of some sort of a a physical or visual attribute or characteristic associated with the icon, with the subject uh, you're trying to represent through the icon. So I'm going to take this and we're going to do a bowl. So I'll think about the bowl. What, what's the most important characteristic of a bowl? Well, it's the horns, right? So let's create the horns. Okay. Now that's not enough because as we see, that could be a sad face. This could indicate happiness with a smiley face, right? So let's just go ahead and add something to that that will give it further definition. Okay, now we're starting to look like something that's representing a bull, right? There's the horns, there's the shape of the face. Now, what can we do here to, to indicate a color? All right, what do we think about bulls? Well, they're dangerous. You want to beware of bulls, right? So what color can we use to depict that? You got it. Let's use red. So let's just come right down there and let's attach red. Okay. And this would be my bull for my animal, right? So let's go ahead. Okay. And again, guys, yours are going to be sketches, manual sketches, pencil to paper. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to give me several drawings. You're going to pick your emotion. Sad. Okay. Give me a few different ideas for your for your uh, uh, concept development for your icon for sad, okay? Uh, and then describe the emotion that you're, you're trying to represent in your icon. Um, describe why you're using the shapes that you're using. Then come in and talk about the color that you intend on applying to the icon. Same thing with the bowl and then your final third one. So try to give a few examples of each uh, possibilities to use icons for um, for the, the three different subject. and. Um, and, and we'll refine it from there next week. We'll take these into digital. We'll start refining them a little bit. We'll start taking a little bit of a closer look at what makes excellent icons. Okay. All right. Any questions at all, guys, please let me know. Thank you very much.